Let us gather together in the presence of our Lord to offer him our praise and thanksgiving as we seek his guidance and grace for the week ahead. And this is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr. Thanking you as always for joining us on this lovely day the Lord has made. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I just pray the Lord Jesus Christ is out front leading the way. Even through all this rain, of course, it all serves a purpose. Just like your life, it serves a purpose. So stay encouraged. God is watching. Jesus Christ loves you and he's waiting to receive you in his arms right now. And I'm glad to be back online. Took the weekend off to uh, nurse a, a migraine, but everything's good to go now. Thank you for your prayers. I had a lot of folks contact me like, hey, where's the show at? Like, no, nope, it's here. <laughs> Everything is fine. Just had a rough Friday night of a migraine that led into a Saturday morning. But I thank you for your prayers uh, as uh, the Lord restored my um, health. And I'm glad for that because I had two services to do even still. So with that being said, let's get started. Our morning scripture comes from James 5, 7 that says, be patient then brothers and sisters until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. Amen. And we're definitely experiencing some rain out here in Pennsylvania. If you live where I live at here in the central area. So it's a, uh, it's, there's a lot going on weather wise. One minute is 70 degrees and next minute it's 35. You can't keep up. Uh, I think it's God's great unpredictability that keeps us on our toes. Amen. <laughs> but we're going to pray nonetheless. Uh, I want you to go to our website, get-prayer.com. Get-prayer.com. We will be updating the website with some new articles next week. Uh, there's been a lot going on, of course. So we're trying to maintain it to the best of our ability. And of course, if you have any prayer requests, send them on your way. We have a way to contact um, you there and that way you can submit your prayer request and just let us know what's going on and we can send them out to everybody all our subscribers to pray for you and pray with you and with that being said let us pray gracious God as we come before you at the close of another week we humbly thank you for your unfailing love and your presence in our life we thank you for guiding us through the challenges and triumphs of this past week and for granting us the patience and strength to adore not to mention another day where we open our eyes and we still realize that there is still work to do on this side of glory Lord so many people went through stuff last week we had folks going through family trials and tribulations. We had folks in and out of the hospital. We had folks stressed out, not knowing whether or not they'd have a job tomorrow. And there, I'm, I'm, there's more to the list, Lord. I'm positive of it. So we thank you for getting us through another week, a week that was not promised, hours that are not ours. And as long as we remember that, helps us to redeem the time that you give us for those who are sitting at home alone wondering if anybody's paying attention as this time passes I pray father that you will let them know that you're there some people just need to recognize in the stillness of the day when no one's there and they're alone, that you're with them. Encourage them, Father. Remind them that as we look ahead to the week to come, God willing, should we see that week, we place our trust in you, knowing that you will continue to sustain us with your grace and your mercy. These and all things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our topic today is, just when you think all is lost, Jesus appears. Just when you think all is lost, Jesus appears. Have you ever been in that situation? I, I call it sitting in the 11th hour. 
That's what I call it. I have a chair there, as a matter of fact. There have been so many times in my life where I'm sitting there with my family as a husband, as a father, thinking, okay, I don't know what to do. And so I pray. And I wait. And I pray. And I wait for things to change, for God to make his move, for me to respond to his movements in faith and in truth and in obedience. And so you wait there at this place called the 11th hour. And I know we've talked about it so many times, but it's so true. You're, you're, the clock is about to strike 12 and you have no idea what to do to get out of your situation. And just at that point in mind, the Lord Jesus Christ appears and remind you of who he is, what the scripture says in regards to how he's going to take care of you. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. He died for your sins and mine. And you find yourself renewed with hope and vigor, knowing that regardless of what is seen around you, you can look past that. You can look beyond your circumstance and see the Lord making a way out of no way. And then it happens. Things get better. Now we've all been there. We, we have all been there. And so our, our text comes from Luke 24, starting at verse 13. And we're going to read this entire text to about verse 32. Because it's very important to understand this this road that we're on. It's like these folks were on the road to Emmaus. Uh, you know, so we want to really take in the scene and then from there understand what we pull from this scene. So, now I want you to break out your Bibles because this is way too much text to put on the screen. Break out your Bibles today and I want you to read along with me What's going on on the road to Emmaus? Starting at verse 13. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking to each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you're walking? They stood still, the faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened here in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, a pow powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priest and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find the body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And begin with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Verse 28, As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us. For it's nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were open and they recognized him and he disappeared. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and open the scriptures to us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your blessed word. Help our hearts burn at this day and time, reminding us of what you said you was going to do, that you did do it, and everything you said on the other side did happen. Remind us, Lord, to maintain the faith 
in your word. Help us be a light in this world. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Just when you think all is lost, Jesus appears. Isn't it amazing how when things happen, we're so quick to forget what God has told us. You know, we, we're, we're, in, we're human. Let, let's take it for what it is. We're human. We have these things called emotions. And these emotions, while healthy, can also create some mistakes. One of these mistakes being forgetfulness. We can forget everything God has told us when we're angry. We can forget everything God has told us when we're happy, when we're joyful. We can forget, we can forget, we can forget. And then when things happen, as they always do, God reminds us. In the midst of the struggle, in the midst of the turmoil, God reminds us. But what, what does it look like when Jesus appears to us? Look at uh, verses 13 through 17. How do, we, how do we maintain this hope in Jesus when everything we feel like is lost? These, 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 these disciples on the road here were walking as if, though, okay, well, I guess, I guess it's done. <laughs> Even though they were told everything, you know, they were like, well, I guess it's a done deal. I mean, what now? You know, so, but what, the, what does it look like to maintain the hope in Jesus Christ? What does it look like? Verses 13 through 17. Our first uh, thought is we maintain our hope in Jesus because he walks with us in our confusion and despair. We maintain our hope in Jesus because he walks with us in our confusion and despair. My friends, the road to Emmaus was not merely a physical journey. It was a reflection of the inner turmoil and confusion the disciples faced after the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Just as Cleopas and his companion walked, downtrodden and disheartened, Jesus approached them, though they did not recognize him. In our darkest moments of doubt and despair, Jesus walks alongside us, even when we fail to perceive his presence. He listens to our doubts and fears with compassion, offering guidance and understanding. His very presence on the road reminds us that we're never alone in our struggles. He is with us, offering comfort and peace. Notice that Jesus didn't immediately go into them. He didn't immediately yell at them and fuss at them. Though he gently did let them know, okay, you, you, you're forgetting some things here. A lot of times, Jesus is walking with us through everything we're going through, but because we're lost in our emotions, we fail to perceive his presence. Now, of course, here in the scriptures, that was supernaturally done because Jesus wanted to talk with them at a level to remind them of who he was. From a third person point of view, he did not actually just come out and say, hey, I'm here guys. No, he came as one of us, figuring out what was going on and then letting them know, hey, don't you remember what your Bible says? And sometimes we need that. We need that person to come alongside us, hey, don't you recall what the scriptures say? I hope you have a friend like that. In the midst of you feeling defeated, in the midst of you feeling like all is lost, I hope that someone comes with the word of God to you and says, hey, don't you realize some of these things had to occur to put you in the place that you are right now? We don't think about it that way, but we should. Which leads us to our next observation here um, from verses 18 through 24. We maintain our hope in Jesus because he reminds us of the truth of his word. As they journey, Cleopas poured out his heart, expressing disappointment and confusion over the events that had transpired. Isn't that all of us? We're sitting there lost in the emotion of the moment of the things that have happened, the things that have transpired around us. And we, we pain is, is a connector. People want someone to connect 
to their pain. We've talked about this before. People can sit there and talk about pain literally all day. Well, how you doing? Fine. Well, uh, well, you see the movie last week? Yeah. You know, no real connection there. So how are you feeling? Man, man, let me tell you. I feel horrible. And they give you all their ailments. And they tell you about when they went to the doctor and the medicine they got to take. And they're, they're just lost in the pain. And, th- and we see here Cleopas is, he's lost in it. He can't get over it. It hurts too deep. And sometimes as believers, these things can hurt so deep. Whatever is going on with you can hurt so deep that if anybody will listen, we will tell them. Because we want someone to understand what we're going through. And when there's no one there, it eats us up inside. We gain weight. Blood pressure goes up. Depression kicks in. You're on all these pills. You're going to see a therapist. All these things can be eliminated if you know the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know Jesus today? Are you going to church? Do you put yourself around a body of believers that can care for you, that can encourage you? Or are you doing it all on your own? Because you got some weird constitution about why you're not going. I get it. I've heard them all. I've been doing this for almost 15, 16, 17 years. I don't know. Been doing it for a long time. I've heard I've heard all the excuses. I've heard all the reasonings. We're not here to sell you church. We're here to uh, help you be inspired to be around believers because the believers are the church. You got to unlearn some things that this beloved country has taught you about church and look to your Bible and do Bible. And that way you'll be inspired to go to church. It be around people who are worshiping the Lord just like you want to. But you got to you got to bring that pain with you and put it at the cross. Here it is, Cleopas. He's pouring out. He wants someone to connect to it. He wants someone to get it. That's why he said, well, did, well, are you the only person that has not heard about what's going on? In other words, have you been under a rock this entire time? Are you not reading the paper? Are you not in the streets hearing what's going on? Have you not heard anything? Amazing. <laughs> we, we all have been there. We all are so shocked that we're all going through something. And there isn't one person that doesn't know nothing that's going on. And we're like, have you, where have you been this entire time? Do you know that this happened to this person and everybody's upset about it? I mean, what have you been doing? You know, we, we all been there. Yet Jesus gently rebuked them reminding them of the prophecies concerning the Messiah's suffering and resurrection. In our moments of doubt, it's crucial to turn to the Word of God, where we find the promises and assurances that maintain this hope we have. Jesus himself is the living Word, and his truth resonates in the hearts, dispelling the shadows of uncertainty. His words on the road serve as a beacon of light in the midst of darkness, guiding us back to the truth that sets us free. Here's the thing. Here, I'm going to put it to you like this. If you are living in despair of the things that have happened to you or a friend, you need somebody there that can break open the word and show it to you and provide this hope and remind you of what Jesus said he's going to do if you submit, surrender your life to him right now. Many of you want Jesus Jesus to do things in your life, but you have not given your life to him to be able to do those things. Why? Because it's a very physical thing for you. It's not a spiritual thing. It's a physical thing. In your mind, well, if he's out there, he should be able to help me with these bills. Well, if he's out there, he should be able to help me with my dysfunctional family. The problem with you, and yes, you, is that you have not surrendered and submitted your life fully to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you are wanting change to occur on a supernatural level that you have not allowed access to occur. 
You want God to do things in your life that, let's be real, it's going to take literally an act of God through Christ Jesus to reconcile, to get people to repent, to turn things around, but you have not given him that access. You have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. You have not submitted your life to him. You have not fallen on your knees saying, Lord, I am a sinner that needs saving. Help me. This is not eloquent. This is not fancy. And you haven't done none of this. But yet you want Jesus to do stuff. It doesn't work that way. He doesn't even know you. Here's what I want to do for you. I want to pray that God presents a revelation to you. Though you should not need signs. You know better than that. You should not need signs. Here, But I want you to have, I want you to look up tonight before you go to bed and say, Lord, help me. I, I need something. I, I, I don't know what I need, but this needs to, get, needs to get fixed. And then look into yourself and recognize that you are a sinner that needs saving. You are someone in the kingdom that can be someone if you just surrender your life to Jesus Christ and trust the process. Just simply trust the process. Okay? So you can be someone in the kingdom right now if you give your life to Jesus Christ and understand that yes, you are a sinner that needs saving. You are a sheep that needs a shepherd and you need to understand the purpose of the cross, not what the internet tells you, but what the Bible tells you on these things. And then you I want you to step back, put your hands, lock your hands up from, from doing stuff and let Jesus through the Holy Ghost reveal to you all the things that, that is going to occur, that's going to happen. And you'll know how to respond. But first you got to take that step into trusting the Lord 100%. Not giving the Lord some things and you take care of some other things. No, 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 no. Give it all to him. Give it all to him. Our third observation here, we find this in verses 25 through 27. We maintain our hope in Jesus because he reveals himself to us through his word and presence. Uh, now, the third one was the second observation. He reminds us of his true, of the truth of his word. And then he reveals himself to us through his word and presence. As they walk, Jesus expanded upon the scriptures, revealing the profound significance of his suffering and resurrection. He brought back to their minds and hearts, opening their eyes to the truth of who he was and who he is for us. Likewise, in our journey of faith, Jesus reveals himself to us through his word and presence. As we immerse ourselves in scripture and seek his face in prayer, he unveils his glory and grace, strengthening our hope and deepening our relationship with him. His presence on the road reminds us that he is not a distant deity, but a personal God who desires intimate fellowship with his children. I say all of that to say this. He was teaching and walking with them reminding them of all the things that had been said in the scriptures, helping them control alt delete their faith, I guess. You know on a computer when things get to a point where they're not working and you gotta you gotta do that control alt delete and then restart. This is what's going on here. That that is exactly what's going on here. He is reminding them of all the things that have been said that were supposed to happen, that did happen, by the way. That did happen. And sometimes we've got to be reminded of what God has said he's going to do. And he does it at a very personal level with us. Not in a public level, but a very personal level. In this case, he's walking alongside them on this road to Emmaus, and he's bringing back to their attention everything that they had been told. Which leads us to number four, verses 28 through 32. We maintain our hope in Jesus because he transforms our hearts and ignites a burning passion within us. Or for some, reignites a burning passion within us. As they reached Emmaus, Jesus 
uh, was getting ready to leave, but Cle Cleopas and his companion urged him to stay. It was in the breaking of bread that their eyes were open. Do you notice that breaking of bread? Does, does that remind you of anything? The Last Supper, okay? Um, that's, you know, that's, that's where immediately where my mind goes. He reveals himself in the breaking of the bread. Why? Because that was the Last Supper, the breaking of his body. We know this. They recognize him, and in that moment, their hearts burn with them with the realization of his presence. They realized at that moment in time that they weren't talking to just a random stranger. They were talking to Jesus. Isn't that great knowing that Christ can come right alongside us? We may not recognize him at first. But when we have fellowship with them and we listen to what's going on closely, when we enter into that intimate fellowship, the breaking of bread, we can see everything. We can see him for who he is in any leaves. When we commune with Jesus, he transforms our hearts, filling us with a love and passion for him. He becomes more than a historical figure, a distant deity. He becomes our savior, our friend, our hope. And he was everything on this road to them. He was the savior. He was reminding them of the things that had to occur and the things that did occur. He was their friend. He's walking alongside them and he's letting them remember and he's teaching them. He's gently rebuking them saying, you weren't, you wasn't raised this way in the faith. You wasn't taught this way in the faith. You're supposed to have hope. You're supposed to understand that these things had to occur and trust in the process. When Christ said he was coming back, he said he was coming back. When he said he was going to be raised from the dead three days later, that he meant that. He meant that. Why do you not hold on to these things? This is where we, the rubber meets the road in our journeys with Jesus. When Jesus says to you through the Holy Ghost, the things that are going to happen, the things that are going to occur, do you trust in them fully? And then when they happen and Christ is revealed through it all, through this miraculous engagement of fellowship and intimacy with the Lord, then it all comes rushing back. And then you remember, oh yeah, the Spirit told me this was going to happen. Why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Maybe it didn't come the way you wanted it to come. Maybe it did not uh, appear the way you wanted it to appear, so you didn't recognize it. And because of that, again, these emotions, they get the best of you. You're finding yourself now, in hindsight, looking back, saying... He was there the entire time talking to us and engaging us and helping me get through this mess that I'm in right now. It's just that I was so lost in my own grief and despair, I didn't recognize it. But that's the grace of God, though. That's the grace of God reminding us that we're still human. We're still fragile beings, but he's our father and he's going to get you through it. His presence at the table reminds us of his sacrificial love, igniting a fire within us that cannot be quenched ever. We partake of his grace and mercy. Our hearts are set ablaze with love and devotion for our risen Lord. It's at that point where at the 11th hour, going back to what we said earlier before we started the message, is where we see these things occur. And... That's when, you, that's when you really get it. That God's got control of it from beginning to end. So as we journey through life's uncertainties and challenges, let us cling to the hope that we have in Christ. He walks with us in our confusion, reminds us of his truth, reveals himself through his word and presence, and ignites a burning passion within us. May we, like Cleopas and his companion, recognize the presence of our risen Lord in every step of our journey. And may our hearts be filled with this hope that we have, this unspeakable joy that we have.
And if you're out there and you need to understand this more, contact us via the website get-prayer.com, get-prayer.com. We would love to hear from you. Or contact me on the show's website. We have a page there as well. Uh, you can email me directly with any thoughts you may have, any concerns you may have, and we would love to get with you and show you what life is like on the road and remembering Jesus Christ through it all. So until then, may God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And God willing, we'll talk to you next week. You take care.